it's a sign that things are not hopeless and that there is a possibility of recovery and that you're being reminded of that, however briefly from time to time. So with regard to treatment of major depressive disorder, um, how do we get better from it? What are the treatments? Well, <clears throat> treatment can be complex, can be comprehensive. You know, we've talked about the causes of depression and how depression presents, and of course, that uh, helps us to understand that treatment uh, can vary a lot from person to person. Each person's depression, in a way, is unique, and for each person it may unfold in its own unique, unique way. I think the first thing when we're thinking about treatment, the first thing is the issue of an assessment. So if a person is feeling depressed, I would suggest they talk to their family doctor about how they're feeling. And then if it's right for them to see a psychiatrist or a mental health expert, and have an assessment. Have an assessment taking into account the causes of their depression, the type of person they are, their life situation. And in this way, a treatment plan can be discussed and arranged that is designed to meet their needs. And treatment, of course, for some people will be psychotherapy, some form of psychotherapy. For other people, medication and psychotherapy. And nowadays we have a wide range of antidepressant medications and mood stabilizing medications. And of course, we have different types of psychotherapy. Uh, people often have a combination, medication and uh, psychotherapy. And in this way, the issues that uh, are linked to the depression, you know, can be treated and, and resolved. Also for some patients with more serious major depression, there are additional treatments available, some of which include electroconvulsive therapy, known as ECT, and uh, transcranial magnetic stimulation, known as TMS. Also, the medication ketamine is a relatively new treatment for depression. The psychedelic drug Psilocybin is currently being investigated as a treatment for certain types of depression. And finally, admission to hospital should also be considered in times of crisis or where the patient is at risk or is just not coping. So in addition to the medication and therapy, etc., what other aspects of treatment might a person have? Uh, I think uh, we've been talking about the treatment of depression from a strictly psychiatric point of view, but depression has to be looked at, at, at in, a, in a much more in a much more comprehensive way. And I would ask the person to think in 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 this way: What can I do? What can I do about my depression? What's my role? I think the first thing is become informed. Become an expert on depression. Read up about depression. Go to talks on depression. Know all about depression. Become an informed person. Get to know what works for you. Get to know things that we know help people, help their general, their general health. Exercise, diet, yoga, mindfulness practice. Meditation, all of these are very important uh, factors or should be in the life of the depressed person. Get to know what works for you. Indeed, get to know what part of your treatment works for you and that you have a holistic perspective on depression. People who approach depression in that way do better, uh, have more success uh, in terms of recovery from depression and also, it's almost a protection against a recurrence of depression. 
with recovery from depression or in, in treatment for depression, how long will it take for a person to recover? Yeah, and I, I hate to say this again and again, it will vary from person to person mm -hmm. because each person's depression is different. The causes are different, their life situation, their life history. But to try and answer your question, in general, uh, let's take medication management. In general, if I put a person on, a depressed person on an antidepressant, I expect a significant improvement between 8 and 12 weeks. 8 to 12 weeks later, I expect that person to have improved significantly, that they are coming to me and saying, Doctor, I'm feeling so much better. If that hasn't happened, I have to think of you know changing medication or going back to the diagnosis. If a person is getting psychotherapy for their, for their depression, surveys have shown that depressed people in psychotherapy, that 50% are improved, significantly improved, after 15 to 20 sessions. So that's a useful you know, rule of thumb, mm -hmm. uh, those, two, those two examples. Mm -hmm. But depression often takes time because there are many factors involved. And as we proceed in treatment, changes have to be made to treatment and changes may have to be made in, in the person's life situation. You mentioned the medication aspect of treatment. So does a person need to take pills? Um, it seems like that is what all doctors do um, these days is to, or that's what people feel, um, is that if they are depressed or they're diagnosed as depressed, that here's a pill. Um, and, and some people hear they don't really work. So do people need to take a medication? We hear that a lot, you know, doctors prescribe pills. And I have to say, patients willingly take pills. I think we live in a, in a pill-orientated society. You know, that if we have medical problems, we're quickly put on pills. Older people may be taking up to four or five or six different types of pills. Uh, often, in a person's mind, the easiest solution is to take a pill and it, uh, it's, it's very tempting and once you take the pill you, it, you have a sense you don't have to deal with the problem. Uh, but pills are sometimes necessary but pills are sometimes not necessary. I would from time to time find in my practice patients who are on pills and they needn't be on pills and then I'd see patients who really should be on pills <laughs> and they're not taking the pills. So again, it's an individual assessment. Certainly for severe depression, pills are a very important part of treatment because the person often is so severely depressed that they can't, in a meaningful way, get involved in treatment. However, with the assistance of pills and with the reduction in the severity of depression, that allows them to get involved in a meaningful treatment program. So there's a role for pills, and of course there's a role for psychotherapy. So can pills alone cure depression? I don't think so. I think that pills must always be combined with, um, with psychotherapy. But I can understand uh, where a person is severely depressed, there may be a focus on medication management because at that point in time, the person is too depressed to get involved in a treatment program, a rehabilitation program, or psychotherapy, or group therapy, or uh, marital therapy. And so at the early stage of treatment for severe depression, pills may be the most important part of treatment, but always psychotherapy you know, plays a role, an important, I was, I was gonna say an important part, an essential role in treatment. Pills by themselves are rarely, you know, enough. So a person asked a question that, and said, um, I really don't care enough to get help. I just want to sleep and be by myself. But I know I should get help because of my family. So how do I start? That's such a challenge. 
I'm so depressed that I don't have the motivation to do anything. That's such a challenge and not uncommon. It's very, very difficult. My first advice uh, would be to talk to somebody, to talk to a trusted friend who may help you to stand back and see the way you feel, to see it as part of your depressed state. Very often when we're depressed, we see the depression as our fault, that uh, it's an indication of our failure. It's an indication that we're no good. So we see the depression, the experience of depression, in a very personal way. So talking to somebody, talking to a tr trusted friend, may help you to stand back and say, no, I wasn't like this a year ago or two years ago. This is different. This is not me. And that's the first step in doing something about the depression. Always remember that the symptoms of depression are hopelessness, lack of energy, lack of motivation, bad feelings about yourself. All of these symptoms then act as a barrier to your recovery. But if you can learn to see the, the symptoms in that way, that they're symptoms, they're not you, that they're not a reflection of your inadequacies, that can be the first step. The first step perhaps in getting you to see your family doctor and talking things over with your family doctor and from there going to, going to the expert. But certainly that is a challenge we come up with again and again in depression. What do people mean when they say to a depressed person, be sure to notice the glimmers? I think that that is to remind us that even though we may be very depressed, there are times when we'll, we'll have a glimpse of what is possible. There are times where the depression retreats just for a few seconds, for a few minutes, and you can see beyond the depression, and you get a glimpse of hope, of the possibility of recovery, and then it's lost, and it'll come back again. and so. It's important to be aware that that happens and then to see when it does occur if you can hold on to it or if you can't hold on to it to remember it because it's a sign that things are not hopeless and that there is a possibility of recovery and that you're being reminded of that however briefly from time to time. How does a person when they've recovered from depression stop it from coming back again? Yes, that's such an important question because we know that for most people depression can recur. About 75%, 70% of depressions can recur. Only about 30% are a single, a one-off experience in a person's life. So preventing a recurrence is terribly important. And I think we, we, we talked about it in, a, in an earlier talk. I think it's so important that you take ownership of the depression and its treatment, that you get to know what is known about depression, get to know treatment and how treatment works, that you make sure that the treatment plan that you have is the right one for you, that you have a comprehensive approach to mental health, and that it includes not only uh, medication management and psychotherapy, but a whole lifestyle, a lifestyle of exercise and diet, uh, leisure activities, relationships, uh, involvement in things like mindfulness practice, uh, meditation and so on. Uh, we know that people who are involved in that, in that way uh, and uh, are participating in these activities have a reduced risk of uh, recurrence. And even if they do recur, they have the skill set to get through the uh, recurrence much more effectively than people who do not or are not involved in, in these different ways. Mm -hmm.